try not to break down. <laughs> I know. Uh, my name is Marcus Benton. Uh, I was uh, Harry's uh, son-in-law. And uh, when I first come out here, I came out here from Oakland. And uh, I met his daughter, Melvina. And so uh, I had to come by to see her, to take her out. <laughs> so I started talking to her. I called him Grandpa now. So he said, well, I don't know what you, you got to do, boy, but you're going to have to do something. <laughs> and uh, uh, me and him had a pretty good bond because when I came out here, I don't know how many people are from down south, but a lot of people down south, uh, their mothers have babies without being married, just like it happened today. And that's the way I was brought up. We had a mother, she took care of about 10 others. Most of us had different daddies. And for somehow, Grandpa found out. Uh, I think he talked to uh, some man that was from the same town I was here, I was from. And uh, he found out that I didn't have a, a father in my life. So, uh, me and him talked. He said, you know, son, uh, I heard about where you're from and your situation. He said, you got a father. He said, I'm going to be your father. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, me and him talked. He was just like my father. And we're not here to moan uh, regret that he died. We're here to celebrate him. Because if everybody up here talk, you see what type of man he was. And I always told him, I said, Grandpa, I want to be just like you when I grow up. <laughs> and I still think that way. Because he was the same man. If you've seen him in church, or you've seen him out of church, he didn't sway. And a lot of people is not who they is. They'll be one person one minute, then the next minute there'll be somebody else. And what I like about him, he was the same person all the time. Grandpa would be like you. And like um, all the stuff that he did and how he did stuff to help other people, uh, like he helped raise my kids. He the one who was getting up early in the morning, was taking them to church. He the one that in after church helped feed them. And I think my kids uh, turned out to be pretty good. And not on me, it was on him too. When I came here, I didn't have no family. Now you see this whole group right here? Most of all you my family because of him. My kids, my nieces and nephews, they wouldn't be here without him. They used to leave off his tree. But what he did for the time he was here, it was quite a bit. And so that's why I say he wouldn't really like it if we sat here crying. Because me and him talk, he said, I know where I'm going to be when I pass. That's right. God promised you so much time here. And he said, I'm not scared to death. You know, and that's what we should be. We shouldn't be scared of passing. Because you need to do what you need to do while you're here. He did everything he needed to do because he knew what he was going. And when you start being that other person, I know a lot of y'all went to sleep at night, you had real bad dreams. You had dreams that people was trying to catch you. Dreams that monster was getting you. Dreams that you couldn't get away with and you wanted to wake up. Now, then you had dreams that it was all pleasant. You wanted to stay in that dream because you liked it. It felt good. That's where he's at now. Now, you got options right now to either have a good dream or have a nightmare. And if you have a nightmare, they're going to run your whole eternity. He sleep, the body's there. Because when you go to sleep, your body's there not doing anything, but your brain's still moving. Your spirit's still moving. 
And so we all got opportunities, we all got time to change, change the dreams. And like we all got Ten Commandments, God, thou should not steal. Still a cookie ain't bad. You steal something from an older person. That's bad. Now you're gonna drive, they say break, you know, go to speed limit. A lot of us don't go to speed limit. We all got we got rules. Tim McKinnon is a rule. But if you go past the speed limit and kill a couple or little kids, that's another thing to keep you from having good dreams. So we got time to treat people like we want to be treated. Grandpa treated people like he wanted to be treated. He had good dreams. Now you got time to change and you should change the day. Because that was a good man. Everybody know he probably went before his time, but God called him. He said you did a job and you did a good job. Because he probably needed him with him because he got a good angel now. And everybody know that. And so, uh, I'm not gonna keep running my mouth because he always say, boy, you should have been preaching. Because <laughs> he know that I ran my mouth a lot. But you know, to him, I had a father back in Oklahoma, but my real father was out here. It wasn't by blood, but it was just by, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but I knew that was my father because he treated me just equally or better than he treated his own kids. And so, uh, last word, we should uh, celebrate his life because he had a good one. <laughs> we shouldn't mourn over it. And we need to get to that place where we're going to have good dreams. Because time will run out on us, all of us. And so if you want to make that change, you need to start making that change today because we don't want to have our last day going to sleep with bad dreams. And that'd be it. My daughter cut me off. <laughs>